that are witnesses to join together with the Holy Ones in that joining. Rex Smith and Barbara Coffey. We give the bride to be married. Her family and I. Let's pray together. Father, today we thank you for our great, awesome day that you give us. Thank you for Rex and Barbara. Thank you for what they mean to me and to this church and to your kingdom. But today I thank you for their love for each other. I thank you for the fact that they have made a commitment to you and then to each other. I pray today that as we go through this service, that you would speak not just to Rex and Barbara, but you would speak to each of us here. Help us see and know and to understand that you're God and there's none like you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Rex and Barbara, God's given us this promise in Jeremiah chapter 29. Beginning at verse 11. Probably my favorite passage of scripture in all the word of God. And this is what he says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you'll call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. It is a biblical fact that God has a plan for your life. He was aware that you were going to be here long before you got here. And he had something magnificent and marvelous in store for you. When you study the scriptures, you'll find out that in the Garden of Eden, God called to sleep to go with Adam. And when Adam awoke out of his sleep, God presented to him Eve. Eve was God's gift to Adam. Today, in this true sense, you're God's gift to Rex, and you're God's gift to walk. And God doesn't give junk. He just gives great stuff. So God has a plan. He not only had a plan, but he had gifts. And in this plan, he says, this is what I want you to know that I have for you. And so as you, as you begin, he said, plans to prosper, not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. As you stand here today beginning a brand new life together, opening up a brand new book, a brand new page, God wants you to know that he has something for you. And this is the plan, prosperity and hope and the future. That's exactly what God says he has in store for you. And God keeps his promise. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews that God cannot lie. So when God promises you prosperity, a hope, and a future, then you can believe it. You see, your life together speaks awesome words of how God is working in your life and through your life. But you aren't just promised the prosperity and the hope in the future. Listen to what he says. Then you'll call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. As you enjoy that future and prosperity and hope together, God says, I've got icing on the cake. And the icing on the cake is that he's promised to answer your prayer and to be with you. So it doesn't matter where you go. doesn't matter how many storms of life. doesn't matter how many victories. God says, I still have my plan. And you're a part of my plan. And I'm going to be there for you. And I'm going to see you through it. So, that's the promise. But there has to be a prescription. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful, or proud or rude. Does not demand its own way. Is not irritable. And it does, keeps no record of being wrong. Does not rejoice about injustice. But rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Now listen to what he says. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and he endures through every circumstance. 
Now this is what Paul is saying. He's saying that love is strong, love is unconditional, love is giving, and love never fails. But there's some issues here. Because you and I know that there are times in life that love doesn't seem all that strong. And love doesn't seem all that unconditional. And love doesn't seem all that giving. And we've known times where love has failed. Well, we just said earlier that God doesn't lie, so what's the deal here? Well, this is the prescription. The truth of the matter is, Rex, you can't love Barbara according to this prescription. And Barbara, you can't love Rex according to this prescription in your own self. But here's the key. When you allow God to love Barbara through you, and when you allow God to love Rex through you, then you'll find this amazing truth that love is strong, love is unconditional, love is giving, and love never fails. So God gave you the promise and then he gives you the prescription to make it all work. And this kind of commitment can all be summed up in these words. And I think if, if you could say, if you could verbalize what Paul is saying to you, I think it would come out something like this. All I want is to love you for the rest of my life. To wake up every morning by your side and come home to your loving arms. All I want is to share each day with you. To talk about our family and the little things that make us laugh. And those not so little things that we can't help worrying about. All I want is to grow old with you. To watch our life unfold and our dreams one by one come true. All I want is to love you forever. And so Paul says, if you understand the promises and you follow the prescription, then that will describe your marriage. Now Rex and Barbara, obviously that kind of commitment doesn't come easy. It requires hard work and requires lots of giving and lots of taking. It requires lots of patience and it requires spending time together with his friends. But you know what? I am confident that it's going to happen. So because of your commitment to each other and because of your commitment to Christ, it's my privilege to ask you to join your right hands together. Rex, do you accept Barbara as a person to be your wife with her strengths and with her weaknesses, to be loyal to her in health and illness, to share what you have and who you are, to love enough to risk being hurt, to trust when you misunderstand, to weep with her in sorrow, to laugh with her in joy, so long as you both shall live. Barbara, do you accept Rex as a person to be your husband with his strengths and with his weaknesses, to be loyal to him in health or illness, to share what you have and who you are, to love enough to risk being hurt, to trust when you misunderstand, to weep with him in sorrow, to laugh with him in joy, so long as you both shall live. I need this reason. This ring that I have on the end of my finger. Your shoulder is going to be on the head of you and your bride. It's made out of the purest metal that we know, and that's gold. My prayer today is simply this that the vows that you take, the love that you have, will be as pure as the metal of the ring that you wear. I you to take that and place it on Barbara's finger. Repeat this ring now. With this ring, I thee win. With loyal love, I thee endow. And all my worldly goods with the eyes here, and the man of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This ring that I have on my finger, very short one over your hand, you do that. You notice in the inner circle, my prayer today is simple this, that the vows that you make to each other, the vows that you make to God, will be as if it says the ring that you wear on your finger. I want you to take that and place it on Rachel's right finger, repeat this ring back. With this ring, I thee wed, with loyal love, I thee endow, and all my worldly goods, with thee I share, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Walker and Rex are going to do 
a sad ceremony. And as they make their way to these two containers of sand, each one represents <coughs> their lives to this moment. Thank you. 